Hello and welcome to Build and Deploy. My name is Marius Netter and I'm a Senior Director in Oracle's North America Cloud Engineering Organization. Today, I'm here with Brett Barnhart, the Head of Application Support from Sonoco, one of the world's leading green consumer packaging and construction materials suppliers. Brett, welcome. Can you tell us a little bit about Sonoco and your role at the company? Sure thing, Marius, and, and thank you for that introduction. Uh, you know, Sunoco Products Company was founded in 1899, uh, uh, so it's a, you know, over 100 years old, 122 years old. Uh, it's United States-based international provider of a diversified consumer packaging, industrial products, uh, protective packaging, and packaging supply chain services, and the world's largest uh, supplier producer of composite cans, tubes, and cores. Uh, we have an annualized net sales of about $4.9 billion and about 20,000 employees with more than uh, 335 opera operations in 33 countries, serving more than 85 nations. Uh, the company is headquartered in Hartsville, South Carolina and is South Carolina's largest corporation in terms of sales. Thank you, Brad. Why don't we look together at the architecture diagram and look at the key components uh, that uh, we took advantage when building the OCI architecture at Sonoco. No, well, that sounds really good, Marius. Uh, you know, there's really, uh, you know, starting off, uh, one of the major components with any sort of data center is how do you connect? Uh, and with OCI, there's really, you know, three, for us, three major avenues that we're using. And it's, it's a hub and spoke design. Um, overall, uh, we are connecting to OCI with Fast Connect. Uh, it gives us a, a great, uh, robust, fast connection from the world into OCI. Uh, we're also taking advantage of the Azure connection that uh, Oracle has essentially natively within the system to, you know, we have several applications running at Azure who need the data from EBS and our data centers at OCI. That, that fast connect with, uh, with Azure gives a very low latency, uh, a, a big bandwidth uh, connection between the two systems. And then we really take advantage of Oracle's backbone. Uh, and that is the connection that's going on Oracle's own infrastructure between Ashburn and Phoenix. And we do a lot of data transfers. Of course, that's where, uh, you know, we're, we're taking advantage of uh, data guard to, to transfer data to our DR system. Uh, and, and that is just something that's even behind the scenes from everything that, that you know, it, that Sunoco has to deal with. It just, it just happens. Um, and then within each data center, you know, the, the beautiful thing about OCI is it really allows customers to tailor this to exactly your needs. And so we've set up a number of uh, VCNs, virtual cloud networks, um, it, to really meet our needs from security, um, um, mainly security aspect, but also from a uh, just overall uh, robustness. Um, you know, we want to separate our various instances from each other. Um, a lot of times we put, um, you know, for example, <clears throat> our EBS environment is made up of three internal app servers uh, and we have one external and, and OCI's architecture allows us to create a, a virtual or a public VCN for, uh, you know, ingress to that, that external uh, servers. And then we create our, uh, our VCNs, our private VCNs uh, in kind of a clustering for each of those app tiers. As an EBS customer, uh, we're running multiple uh, app application servers and in, in clusters, and, and we have a number of applications that do that, we need to have file systems that are shared mount points between those. Um, and, and that's all something that, that's all things that we get through with object storage. Um, we do use some uh, file storage for uh, kind of more short term uh, integrations. Correct, uh, Red, and, and I think at the end, uh, the success of this project was uh, the improvement in performance that we observed uh, right after the go live with, without necessarily too much uh, tuning before going live. Uh, the performance has improved by, I think, uh, by about 17% or something like that. And then it continued to improve as the system was uh, being utilized as well. So I think that was really, uh, successful collaboration between Oracle and uh, Sonoco that allowed us to achieve the, uh, that great improvement in performance. 
Now, no, that's uh, you're absolutely correct, Marius. And 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 I mentioned earlier that we did both the migration to OCI as well as updating or upgrading from 12.13 to 12.29. And one of the challenges with that approach is not only the technological aspect of you're doing two major activities at the same time, it is, uh, it, it is very hard to really get in and measure some of these things. Um, and, and we were not only focused on right-sizing our environment on OCI, um, we were also working with a brand new architecture between 12.13 uh, and 12.29. Um, but, you know, exactly as you said, at the end of the day, I, I did a lot of a, analysis and comparisons of things like the current program histories. Um, and overall, there was a marked improvement of our, uh, our job run times uh, when we migrated to OCI. In your view, what was the best or perhaps were the most important technical advantages of your current solution? Technical advantages that you believe made a difference and helped you with your operation or business challenges? I think the biggest advantage of moving to OCI for us uh, from a pure, uh, pure hardware perspective has been Exadata. We're running our Oracle databases, that workload on the fastest system that's possible. Um, it, we have a lot of scalability. Um, if we need to increase CPUs, uh, you, it's a very simple process. It's all, it's all hot. Um, the maintenance for Exadata is, is very well coordinated um, and, and patching occurs without any sort of user interruption using a, a, the rack uh, database system and multiple nodes to, to roll through. Um, having the uh, flexibility on the network side has been a, a tremendous advantage. It allows us to really set up the network in such a way that it really matches Sunoco's requirements. Um, with our, our subnets and, very, and various availability domains, um, you know, it allows us to have that fine-tuned control. And I would add it even uh, the instances, uh, the compute instances, um, it's very easy to reshape instances into the, uh, if you need to increase the size for memory or CPU utilization, it's very easy within the system to reshape uh, the compute hardware. Uh, most of it's not yet hot, uh, but a very minimal downtime. And if you have an HA architecture, you can do it with zero business uh, interruptions. What's next uh, with respect to Sonoco and migrating work, its workloads uh, to Oracle Cloud? That's a great question, Marius. 2020 was uh, largely about the migration to OCI. And, and now we're in this growth phase where we're rolling out to uh, a lot of additional uh, facilities. Uh, within the Sunoco organization. Uh, we've currently have rolled out to roughly one third of all of our facilities. So we have a lot of growth just from a pure deployment perspective, which will be go ongoing for the next two years. Uh, we are rolling out a lot of new applications, AP automation, OTM, OPM. Previous year was all about getting the foundations in place to really set us up for the future. And now we've enabled that, it's going to be uh, really enabling the business to not only run, but to really exceed uh, expectations from an IT perspective. Uh, Brad, uh, thank you very much uh, for taking time to uh, speak with me about uh, Oracle uh, Cloud and your experience implementing uh, or migrating Oracle workloads to Oracle Cloud. And for everybody, please stay tuned for the next episode of Build and Deploy.